Hare Krishna. A happy new year is a word that we hear constantly. It's not just a word, it's a sentiment. It's a hope, it's an aspiration. Especially that we repeat at the start of every new year. What would be the Bhagavad Gita perspective on this greeting and the aspiration it underlies? Let's discuss briefly today a Bhagavad Gita perspective on Happy New Year. So the Gita is a book which gives many different insights. And therefore, different people can come up with different ways of looking at contemporary events, drawing from different sections of the Gita. So here, I talk about three perspectives. So one is, based on the Gita, somebody may say this is inconsequential. Someone will say this is mis the, the whole ce celebration, the festivity is just misleading, not just inconsequential distraction, but it's a misleading. And then another way of looking at it is could be it could be positively transforming. So let's look at how these three perspectives can be drawn from the Bhagavad Gita itself. So why might the new year and the greetings and the celebrations and the wishes associated with it be considered inconsequential? Because the Gita talks about a cyclic conception of time. In fact, and it is not just the Gita's conception of time. We see time in nature is cyclic. It's morning, afternoon, evening, night, morning again. The months are cyclic, the years are cyclic. So in general, the conception of time in the Gita is cyclic. And within the cyclic nature of the universe, no time is particularly special. So we have decided based on our current conceptions of the calendar, which is the Gregorian calendar, broadly speaking, at a particular time conveys the transition from one year to another year. So there is nothing cosmically significant about it. And therefore this whole celebration is just inconsequential. So we could ask the question, what's actually new about a new year? And even this is not just the Bhagavad Gita perspective, it could be backed even by empirical observations. We know that time, especially months and years are measured based on the movement of the cosmic bodies in their various orbits. So we consider one year to be completed when the earth completes its revolution around the sun. So if the earth is going in a circular path, now there is no special point in a circle which marks a transition. So even from that perspective, we could say that New Year celebrations are just a big ado about nothing. Because this the earth is moving at its own regular pace around the sun and that's all there is to it. So this is one way that this is inconsequential. I'm not interested in New Year celebrations. I don't care about them. That might be one way of looking at it. Another way could be, this is not just inconsequential, it is consequential, but in a, in a unhealthy way. It is misleading. Why? Misleading because these can become occasions or reasons or justifications for sensuality and revelry. They just get into all kinds of materialistic, sometimes even hedonistic enjoyments. And partying and drinking often rise to a peak at this time. There are vacations available and especially when it follows with Christmas, then people may sink deeper into unhealthy patterns of behavior. And those, uh, from the Gita's perspective, excessive uh, drinking and partying and things like that, these reflect the lower modes, the modes of rajas and tamas, passion and ignorance. In rajas, we just are interested in doing, doing, doing. And then after working very hard, after partying very hard, when it's not, not satisfactory, we are exhausted, we have to forget everything by going into tamas, by drinking. Now these can become self-reinforcing habits which may entrap us. So that's misleading. That's one way we can say that, oh, this is misleading because instead of something coming happy and new, actually what are we doing? The same things which we have used for indulgence before, we're doing the same things. 
and do they make us happy so they are not new they are old actually they end up making us disappointed if not distressed so we get a hangover somebody drinks too much at the end of the of the new year celebration next morning we wake up and the same old grind begins so it's disappointing so on top of that it is misleading not just because we may get into sensuality and revelry but also because there is a whole mechanism machinery a huge industrial complex out to commercially exploit us so the more the new year is hyped up the more people want to celebrate and we get targeted and sometimes we also get manipulated oh go to this place enjoy buy this watch this go here and the corporate controlled media what they do is they incite desires within us and so much wasteful frivolity inanity and even depravity comes out so you spend money unnecessarily when wastefully if we just consider the amount of liquor that is consumed and the amount that is spent on that that could help so many we could say poor people starving people so the point is that people get exploited it's commercial exploitation is there systematic targeting the hype is there just to fleece us fleece us so etam drishyam avishtabhya nishtat manual pabuddhaya krishna talks about how the demon the ungodly vision uh, is exploitative and eventually self destructive so now we can these two are reasonably acknowledgeable but beyond that the happy new year greeting when it is said it is said with a sentiment and what is that sentiment that sentiment reflects a deep rooted human aspiration we want our life to be happier we want there some newer things to be there in our life that's that's because we are at our core spiritual beings and we are meant for a better life we are we long for something better because we are meant for something better and that brings us to the bhagavad gita's core message why is this longing for a happier new year life there a longing that is verbalized at the time of the new year because we at our core are souls and the soul is rich with potentials all these potentials are waiting to be actualized as the potentials get actualized we find more and more enrichment fulfillment we make greater contributions we bring about greater transformations in ourselves and in society so there is this potential which needs to be actualized so any occasion that stimulates us that inspires us that motivates us for such actualization of our latent potentials that occasion is good so if the new year inspires us to transform ourselves for the better to become more of who we are meant to be then that is something which can be positively channeled so what would be a sattva guna approach we talked about rajas and tamas in sattva guna generally the mode of goodness is characterized with self observation so we can observe ourselves and then think of improving ourselves how we take an objective look okay at our motivations at our emotions and our actions this is broadly what we can call as introspection krishna talks about this in the bhagavad gita in the 14th chapter sarva dwareshu dehe smin prakash upajayate that we become illuminated okay what am i taking in through my senses what is coming out of my senses how am i speaking what am i stay looking at what am i giving my ear to we become more more alert so this can actually help us to become transformed so broadly speaking a new year can become an occasion for us to respond in sattva guna by trying to unleash the potential of our souls now how do we transform ourselves broadly speaking we can say retrospection and resolution so retrospection means that uh, we look behind and look back at the past year to learn from it and resolution means that we look within and then we look ahead 
to see how we can do, do better things, how we can become better beings. So both these are important. And we will see this broad theme even in popular culture. People look back at, say, the year. If somebody is a cricket fan, they look back. The five best moments of the year, the five worst moments of the year. So we all can do retrospection like that. People often read these kind of things. So many websites have the best 10, 10 articles of the year for us. So this is common, but we can do it for ourselves. We look back at our lives. Now we may say, I know the path I went. Why do I need to retrospect? I am driving the car of my life. Well, are we really? And is life really like a car driving? Car drive? No, life is more like a boat ride. Boat ride means that we often, we may be rowing the boat and we want to go in another, a particular direction. But currents keep coming. Sometimes the currents are not even visible. And sometimes even the invisible currents may be irresistible. These currents may come from the world's pressures or they come, they may come from our mind's conditionings. And either way, they take us in directions other than our destination. That's why we, if we look back, see, okay, where, what trajectory did I follow in the last year? Where am I right now as compared to where I could have been, whether I, where I wanted to be, where I should have been? So this kind of retrospection helps us understand where we need, we need to do some course correction. So it helps us to reorient ourselves, refocus ourselves. So again, this, we don't want to get lost in the past. So finite, maybe five things that I learned from the past, five things that were good in my, in my last year, five things which were not so good, which I could try to build on or improve. The good things I can build on, the bad things I can try to rectify or at least uh, prevent their repetition. That's retrospection. And resolu why, resolu why is resolution one way? To bring something happier and newer into our happy new year greeting or into the new year itself. Because we need things may become better, but unless we become better, we won't be able to tap those good things that may happen in our new year. And we need to change ourselves. But changing ourselves is tough. And just as when we have to do something tough, we gird our energy. If somebody says this is a heavy box, then you know, the people ready themselves to lift that heavy box. So sometimes changing ourselves requires similar girding ourselves, preparing ourselves. So we need a conscious, consistent intention that can commandeer the energy necessary to stimulate change and then to sustain change. So a sattvic way to bring meaning into the Happy New Year greeting is by taking resolutions that will actually make our life happier and newer in the upcoming year. Now, we could have a varying attitude toward resolutions also. And this, these can be analyzed in terms of the Bhagavad Gita. So one could be diffidence. Just, I can never do anything. I, this person makes no resolutions at all. That is a tamasic attitude in the mode of ignorance. Ya sopnam bhayam shokam vishadam madame vach navimunjati durmedha dhrti sa partha tamasi. Krishna says in 1835. Then there could be overconfidence about resolutions. I can make any change that I want. We make, we make too many resolutions and make too big resolutions. And then we start getting crushed by them. We crushed, get crushed by them. And often, just like a pendulum goes from one extreme to the other extreme, so quite often with respect to resolutions, we oscillate from rajas to tamas and then back to rajas. So no resolutions, too many resolutions. Instead, we can be more sattvic in our approach. That means we have confidence. Yes, I can, I can make changes. But let me finite and realistic resolutions. What can I do which is doable for me and which is measurable? So this way, this is sattvic approach. Sattvic approach bro broadly centers on understanding or estimating our capacities properly. So the tamasic view of resolutions is that you know, people make a big hype about changing, but nobody ever changes, not for very long. And my attempts have also not worked in the past. So why bother? Just forget it. We may subconsciously think that, oh, I have no determination, I have no willpower. However, 
to hold on to our current way of functioning also requires strength. Our, if, uh, if there are some unhealthy habits that we have and those are getting us into trouble, holding on to those habits also requires strength. So, and that is also a form of determination. So holding on to unhealthy habits is a f- or patterns of behavior, unhealthy patterns of behavior is also a form of determination. Although it's a misdirected determination. We, so we all have determination. We just need to direct it constructively. Instead of thinking, oh, I can never change. It will require too much effort to change. We can instead think it, it's too much trouble to stay as I am. This is, we can, we can remind ourselves of what all we are lose, losing or missing, how we are hurting ourselves, maybe how we are hurting others by the way we are functioning right now. That will motivate us to change. Now, Rajasik wave of resolutions could be that I will make huge amount of, amounts of change in tiny amounts of time. So that is, say, for example, people take uh, uh, severe weight loss uh, therapies and then they may lose for some time and then again all the weight comes back. So it's unsustainable and sometimes the health gets spoiled in that, unbeneficial. So now we talk, we all sometimes to be inspired, we need big goals. Small goals may not inspire us, but that's fine. So we can have, um, we can have big goals. So the point is that goals, uh, our goals may be realistic, but our time frames may not be realistic. So we need to be careful about not expecting too much from ourselves in too short a time. So it's a small study in steps, SSS. That brings us a sattvic view of resolutions. So to actually unleash the energy that we need for sticking to resolutions, what do we need? What are the three th- questions are very helpful. Let's make resolutions not just based on what everybody in the world is doing. Because if the motivation is coming from the world, when that external motivation stops, we will not be able to continue. Instead, what are the things that really matter to me? What are the areas in which I strongly feel that I need to improve? Then there may be many things. But among the things that matter to me, what are the things that I can do something about? There are some things about us that we just can't change. You know, we can't change our IQ level. We can't change our complexion. We can't change our height after we become adults, whatever. So let's not lament about that. Are there something we can change? Let's focus our emotional energy on that. And then how can I take tangible and measurable steps? When we do that, then we can move forward steadily. We can move forward confidently. And that is how we can progress towards uh, successful results. So now, another sattvic way of actually implementing resolutions is having a cyclic approach to fixed resolutions. That means what? Our mind always craves for new things. And that's why if I say, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, the mind just gets too burdened. Instead, what we can do is say, if we take make four resolutions, okay, I want to exercise more. That's for my physical health. I want to meditate regularly. That's for my spiritual health. I want to study wisdom texts. That's for my intellectual health. And I want to appreciate others. That's for my social, relational health. These are the four broad dimensions of our life. So if we want to improve these, then instead of just focusing for lifelong, I'm going to say study every day for one hour. It's good if we can, but sometimes lifelong seems too long and we give up very quickly because it just feels too overbearing. So instead, just plan a resolution. We take four resolutions and we plan one resolution per month. Now, others also we can try to do, but one is a focus. One we focus and we do that. If we have 10 resolutions, 50 resolutions, then by the end of one or two days, we forget even the resolutions or to leave alone uh, implementing those resolutions. So that is Rajasik. A lot of resolutions is not actually a resolution, it's just a wish list. So finite resolutions and sometimes cyclic way helps. So we focus on one for a month, we develop some momentum and that momentum will keep going and shift to another one and third one, fourth one, and then you can come back. That way, a cyclic way, focusing on one resolution per month can help us to channel our energies constructively. And then uh, the devotion connection is very helpful. 
What does that mean? That means that we all have some willpower which we can use to change ourselves. But beyond that, we have access to divine power. That is the power of our almighty Lord. He's present in our hearts and he wants us to change for the better. So by his grace, we all can overcome the conditionings that we have. Usually these conditionings, what happen? They, they, they crash our resolutions. If you're flying, it's like the airplane is flying, it crashes. So like we fly with our resolutions, but sometimes it crashes down. Why? Because we run out of energy. The opposition from our conditionings becomes too much. To avoid that, we can power ourselves with devotion. That is the divine power. Omnipotent divinity can help us. And our, not only can our resolutions otherwise cra crash, but it can crush our will to rise again, to, will make, to make resolutions. But this devotion connection can be our greatest power. And that brings us to the key resolution. That is, if we make one foundational resolution, strengthen our devotion connection. That means strengthen the way, regular, strengthen our commitment to that particular path, particular thing by which we connect with the divine. That may be praying, that may be chanting mantras, that may be worshipping the Lord, the altar in the temple, that may be um, various things, that may be some uh, sacred music, whatever it is. For us, what gives us devotional strength, we strengthen our connection with that. We solidify our connection with that. We make a resolution for that. And that will give us the inner power by which to empower all our other resolutions also. And then our other resolution will fly, will fly faster and fly further. That indeed is the way we can actually make the new year happy. So to summarize, I discuss broadly, the happy, the happy New Year from Bhagavata perspectives can be seen as inconsequential, nothing is changing, the world is cyclic, time is cyclic, uh, or misleading because we just succumb to the modes of passion and ignorance by indulgence and the world also exploits us further. Then we can see this positively transformational. But because why do we long for the in the coming year to be happy and happier and newer because as souls we are meant for a better life if we just actualize the potentials that are dormant in the soul and for that purpose anything that motivates us toward that actualization is great so sattva approach approaches observe ourselves and improve so we take that approach in looking in the transition of the new year we look back and we learn from the past that is retrospection so in the boat ride of our life, did any currents take us off course? How can we reorient ourselves? And then in the, <clears throat> as far as resolutions are concerned, we need energy to sustain the change that can bring out our best. And the tamasic approaches, I will never be able to stick to resolutions. Sarajic approaches, we make too many and too mighty resolutions. That becomes a wish list, not a resolution. The sattvic approaches, Make finite, measurable resolutions and make resolutions about the things that matter to us, things that we can change and the change that we can measure. And we can have, we can cy cycle through various important resolutions so that our mind's eagerness for some new, something new is also taken care of. And if our conditionings are causing our resolutions to crash, the plane is not only crashing, but it's not even rising upward. Our spirits are getting crushed. Then we definitely need divine power. That is accessible through the devotion connection. And with that connection, we, if we make a resolution to connect steadily and strongly with the divine, then truly we can make our new year happier and much better. We can make ourselves better, contribute to making our world better. Thank you. Hare Krishna.